my gosh, Larry. Thank Christ Thomas is not talking. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Aarons. And I'm Carly Byrne. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and for your atheists, Happy Holidays. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, all that jazz. Exactly. Um, if we could get a mic check to all of our viewers right now, we have five mic right check. now. I am mic trying check. some new audio software Can you right hear now. Us? Exactly. Just let us know if we sound good. Uh, good morning. Good morning. She got it. She oh. got it. Oh my God. That makes me so happy. Now tell me this, Carolyn. Do you recognize that from Tom's big reveal last episode where he said that the reason we say good morning didn't you tell me about that in an episode or was it after the episode? No, it was the last episode we yeah, did. Yeah, I think it was due to the, the Good Morning Vietnam show. Absolutely. Is that's, that what it's that's, called? That's how I came up with it. Yep, with Robin yeah, Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, thank you for noticing. Appreciate I really it. appreciate it. Okay, we got good audio so far. It sounds like we got really good audio. Now, guys, I She can't... said no. She recognized it before then. That's what I thought. Oh. That's what I thought. It was probably recognizable. Of course, I didn't recognize well, it until Tommy actually broke the news to me just like a week ago. He well, was like, by the way. I got this from the movie. And then I was like, derp. Can't believe I didn't recognize that. She is a scientist. So that makes sense. Yeah, she is. So how are you doing that, Carly? Good. Now that I'm not working anymore. Was it hard this week? Yeah. What made it sure. hard? People are crazy during the holidays. They're just crazy. They want to get in and get out. They don't want to deal with... There's literally zero patient, patience. There's, there's negative 100 when it comes to patients mm -hmm. this week. And then... Today's weather has been batshit crazy, and it has given me all kinds of anxiety Um, because I hate the wind, and I hate the cold, and it's both of those at the same time, and it feels like negative outside, and it's miserable, and I'm an outdoor person. And the fact that I can't go outside makes me feel claustrophobic. Yes! I mean, oh my God, thank you. Yeah, this is like the most frustrating thing for me right yeah. now, yeah. and I always like when I used to like be a teacher, um, and I used to teach kids and stuff. Like, this was one of the questions I always asked them. It's like, you know, would you rather? And this is a, I think, a very good would you rather. It's like you can have all the daylight you want, but maybe it's cold out. Yeah. Would you still want that? Yeah. And most of them are like, yeah, hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Versus if you could have like eighty degrees, but it gets dark at two. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's like it's the daylight period. Like yeah. I don't care if it's cold, but the thing that sucks is like it gets dark so early, and that's what's so frustrating. Uh, yeah, and the wind. It's the, just the wind today is outside. miserable. Well, yeah, because it feels like it's literally negative fifteen outside right when now. When our woolly dog is like, dude. Come yeah, on, our dog's like, this. nope, not doing this. Not even gonna go poop outside today. Forget this. Meanwhile, he's not good at anything. He can't. Well, no, he can fight dogs. He won't fight a mouse though for us. No, he's not gonna. That's why I told you we need a cat. I'm still working on Tom. Eventually, we'll have a cat. Eventually, well, I thought the dog could do it, but apparently, no, from what you just told our me, our dog does not catch. I literally, basically, brought him up with a ferret. I raised my ferret and my dog together, and I said, "See this cute little rodent-y smelling vermin? Play with it." love it as your own and he did so my the place i do my normal job and my side job is in the basement and apparently we have not five three or four we don't have a lot of mice we have one just one and it's literally the size of a how quarter. do you know we only have one mouse because i'm in the basement you're upstairs yeah so there's nothing above you yeah i hear things scurry and I only ever hear but one thing ever scurry. Okay, well, only when you the have, pitter -patter when four you feet, have one mice, hooves, feet. one mouse, when you have one mouse, you have like 14 maybe, mice. Maybe, maybe. That's usually correct with with rats. Mice. Rats. You know what a rat is? A rat is a bigger mouse. What's a mouse? Huh? What's a rat? You don't know what a mouse is? What? No, I'm being facetious, Tom. Anyway. Oh, me? gosh, here we go. Exactly. Thank you, so Linda. So we have Linda you never Arenes. Have you never have just, just one, one cat, dog, or mouse. Mouse. Um, well, That's what the, I'm saying. Where where there is one, there or will be more. Thank you. Thank you. You're right. Mm. Well, when we have a chance, we will firebomb this uh, duplex we are in. Thank God. We will poison it. Might end up poisoning our dog. That's fine as long as she's proven right. That's all that matters. Mm. Move this over here so we can get started tonight. 
Um, but no, it's been really good, guys. We're back to our Christmas shindig. Uh, we were going to do this tomorrow. However, we had two things that conflicted. Number one is she's working all day. And then number two, without even knowing it to me, I actually started a, I don't know, like a tradition where I live stream. <laughs> uh, it's not even a tradition. I did it last year with Jared. That was that was when I clapped in his face. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But that was when I clapped in his face. Last year Christmas on Eve, Christmas Eve. I was at Jake's and I clapped. You were at Jake's? Yeah. And that's what was I doing last year. Working. I literally put that in the, the title of Fishing the DMV. It's like, as tradition, my wife is working, so I'm going to live stream at Jake's. Oh my gosh, I did not know. <laughs> literally, you read that sentence. And no, I didn't. Like, By the way, so um, I, didn't read that I found this really cool thing. When Where's you get, my mug? When you get married, you'll find this out. Um, she gets tunnel vision when she gets stressed at all, whether it's wind or work or whatever. You know how bad it was? I was at the gym today, and she texted me and asked me, where's the dog? It's not in the house. I said, where's Jojo? And the dog was asleep on the sofa. Because, because when I am locked away in my office, I get anxiety about the weirdest shit because I know that I cannot go check on it for the next hour, hour and a half. So I am hours. 20 miles away. You're so 20 I'm feet. I'm literally stuck, locked away in my office. And to ease my anxiety, I text you. Well, I don't text you. I send you a message online asking yeah. about whatever I'm feeling anxious about. So my apologies. No, I just thought it was fine. It's like, yeah, where's the dog? And then you did go downstairs and you said you didn't just, see him. Some, something in my motherly instinct said, check on the dog. That's because her dog got in a dog fight the other day. Yeah, that was scary. But he won. That's all that matters. Oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> he was there and he was in it to win it. Yeah. You're Mildly right. proud of him. <laughs> mildly <laughs> proud of him i mean he might if i had a child and he was the bully you would different. be proud of the bully no, okay that's no, what you're no, saying no, 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 no. i'm just saying well, this comes true look at your pain okay, 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 okay. for example <laughs> for example if i had a little child low on the totem pole right but somebody came and like punched him but then he beat the kid up back i'd be proud of him because my poor little disabled child. He's not disabled at all. Stood up for himself. All the medical experiments you've done on him, whether you're trying to collect piss underneath this thing, which he does not like, or collecting his shit, whatever, all the scientists and all the doctors say, like, he's perfectly fine. Except for the original diagnosis of that he definitely has something neurologically wrong with him where he can't jump. That doesn't can't mean he's back feet. It doesn't mean he's retarded. Yes, there's. His brain is I fine. truly love how you're like, can you jump like his four feet? Nope, he retarded. Fine. I never said anything was wrong with his yes, brain. Yes, you did every time. I don't know. This is really funny. If we ever had to get this, would be the whole issue too. It's like, are you athletic? Must be retarded. Get rid of him. Sorry. If you can't run a full four, man, you out of here. By the way, um, Carolyn wants to let us know that a rat and a mouse are different species. Carly, did you not know that? I knew that. Oh, I knew it too because I was just telling you that. Anyway, as we get through this, the one thing I want to talk about is Christmas movies real quick before we get into the shindig where mm. we're going to go through the drink, which I'm going to do. Then she's going to tell a story. Then I'm going to do scary things in the news. I got two things we're going to get to that. You have to slow down. You're slurring your words. Number one, movies. I watched a Muppets Christmas Carol again. And it was actually ranked in the top five. Uh christmas stories of all time number one of course is i guess no shock to the people that are more like movie connoisseurs it's a wonderful life kind of like number one but i was actually intrigued that um, in the top five was the muppet's christmas carol I thought it was pretty cool yeah. okay moving on for that christmas cheer you give me you give me literally 0.5 seconds to give you a response sometimes i like to mull things over you remember i have like farmer in my blood remember that with that said, I'm comfortable with silence. Something really funny that happened. <laughs> I had this person that called me up that wanted to actually come on my other show, which is Fishing at DMV, and he's on the Susquehanna River. And it made her heart flutter because he's a farmer <laughs> and he's got chickens. 140,000 of them. He has 140,000 chickens. He said, I don't know that this week's going to work because I'm about to get a shipment of 140,000 chicks. And then Tommy showed me, and I about died. That's what she really wanted in life. 
<laughs> Whoa. <laughs> anyway, so with that said, we're going to get into today's shindig. But first, what are we drinking tonight? Well, we are drinking the Christmas staple of many songs and a merriment across the United States. We are drinking oh, eggnog. Come faithful, joyful mm. and joyful. And I should say this, this is very important. This is the first time I have partaken in the elixirs and any heavy requirements in three weeks. Wow. I went three weeks sober. Very nice. By the way, apparently not drinking alcohol is good for you. Uh, my my complexion uh, cleaned up, as you said. You said I didn't look like a fat piece of shit anymore. Um, I've also been dieting, not as like her. I can still go out in a stiff breeze and not get blown away. But you've lost now 150 pounds, right? Oh, yeah, totally. I've lost 273 pounds because I used to weigh half a ton. Well, my mom's lost like what, 350. Yeah. Your mom's lost one more pound than me. I heard that she wants to actually start doing pole dancing now because she thinks she, she actually has the hips for it. She's vaulting. She is vaulting? Really? Yeah. And she does car wheels. Bullshit. Really? Upside down handstands, push-ups. Push-up handstands. By the way, Linda, do not open the Victoria's Secret thing without me. I'm sure that is on your meal plan. Uh, 100%. No, no, no. Hey, hey, this is just me, as you can tell, with this glass. So she's still doing her meal plan. Um, yeah. Well, that's already out there. Anyway, so with that said, Carly, what is today's tale? Today's tale. Everybody, buckle in. Sorry if it's really, really long for you. However, this story will chill you to the bone. Prepare yourselves for the tale of the caroler. I always thought it was one of life's wonderful coincidence that my fiance's name was Noel, and she loved Christmas more than anybody I know. Every single year, as soon as Halloween was over, she'd be up in the attic fetching lights, bulbs, and tinsel, ready to transform our home into a space so festive it would put Santa's grotto to shame. I can picture her now hanging bows and ribbons over the fireplace in our cottage, blonde hair tied back, stray specks of glitter on her cheeks with the sleeves of her most latest awfully cheesy Christmas jumper rolled up so she could work even harder. Remind you of someone? Mm -hmm. Our neighbor? <laughs> I even joked that the first dance of our wedding would be to the strains of I'll be home for Christmas. And Noelle laughed until tears ran down our cheeks. She used to laugh a lot. That changed this year, in what was to be our last Christmas as an unmarried couple. The cottage had been decorated since the second week of November. We lived on a small rural road, and there are only three other houses around us. As such, we didn't have much competition when it came to Christmas decorations, and we were always the first to switch on the lights on the front of our house. I'd spent a long time hanging strand after strand, bulb after bulb, and soon the front of our house was almost entirely covered in twinkling, sparkling lights. It was a time-consuming, fiddly job, and the electricity bill was going to skyrocket, but it wasn't, but it was worth it just to see the childlike joy on Noelle's face when they were first switched on. I know it sounds corny, but Christmas was Noelle's Really, Christmas with Noel was really the most magical time of year. And if she was excited at the switching on the lights, she was practically jumping for joy when, two weeks ago, the heavens opened and a sudden flurry of snow drifted down onto our little lane. Come look, she squealed, both hands pressed against the window, her nose a mere inch from the glass, as she beamed at the winter wonderland taking shape before her eyes. I slipped up beside her, wrapped my arms around her waist, and kissed her rosy cheeks as we watched the snow fall together. Soon everything was a blanketed in crisp, pristine snow. I lit the log fire, mold, mulled some wine, hold on, mold some wine, and we had a truly heavenly <laughs> evening together. Sorry, Carolyn. Sometimes in my darkest moments, I can take comfort from the fact that Noelle and I shared that amazing night. Sometimes. The snow fell into the following day, and when we rose that morning, it was at least five 
inches thick. Noelle warmed her hands on her mug of coffee and stood at the window transfixed. A short distance along the road, we could see our neighbors, Sarah and Kevin, who held their infant daughter, Olivia, in a baby carrier strapped to his chest, out in the front yard, building a snowman. We'd been good friends with them ever since we moved in, and it made me smile to see their ruddy cheeks and the small puffs of steam they exhaled that rose around them as they laughed together. Noelle waved down to Sarah. The diamond and pink sapphire engagement ring I'd agonized over for weeks twinkling in the bright winter sunlight, and the happy family below saw her and waved back. I know this sounds cheesy, but it was a very iconic holiday morning. By midday, it had become obvious that we weren't going to be driving anywhere for the foreseeable future, and my vain attempts to drive my battered old car out of the garage and across the snowbound driveway were very quickly dismissed as futile. Instead, I reversed the car back into its home, closing the garage behind me. It looks like we're stuck here, Noel had smiled. I really hadn't minded. I couldn't think of anywhere else I'd rather be. There was just one blip on our otherwise wonderful day. Just after lunch, I accidentally brushed against the tree, knocking our star from the top. It hit the floor with a clatter, narrowly missling, missing the assortment of brightly wrapped gifts that were already strewn about, and much to Noelle's dismay, snapped into. It had been the same star that Noelle had placed popped her, atop her tree over a decade, and while it took a little threadbare, it bore some significant sentimental value for her. My attempts to mend the, st mend the star came to um, no avail, and I told a teary-eyed Noelle that I promised I'd take her to buy a brand new one just as soon as the roads cleared. If only that had remained the worst thing we had to deal with. If only he hadn't come to our home. Later that evening, the fire was crackling away, casting a dancing light about the now darker room when we were when we heard the voice. It took a few moments to recognize that it was real. Not from one Noel's scratchy old Christmas records. It was a rich, deep voice, slowly and tunefully singing. I saw three ships. Noel recognized it a moment before I did. A look of undaltered joy spreading across her beautiful face mm. as I saw as I asked her, Can you hear that? A caroler, she cried, actually clapping her hands as we wandered out into the hallway. As we moved closer to the door, I could see a figure through the misted glass. Even from here I could tell he was a big man, at least six five, broad shouldered and barrel chested. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day. His voice was truly mesmerizing. His tone was perfect, not unlike the brassy baritone of a croon such as Ben Crosby or Dean Martin. I could have never imagined that a voice such as that could come from somebody like him, somebody capable of the things that he did. I opened the door and stood, my hand on the doorframe, just taking in the sight before me. For a second, I thought we might have been visited by Santa himself. The caroler was indeed huge. Dressed in a thick, warm, red winter coat, the hood pulled up over his head, casting his face in shadow. The coat was padded, lined with insulation, so it added even more mass to the hulking figure before us. He even had a long, unruly beard that spilled down his burly chest, but unlike Santa, his was a fiery ginger rather than white. However, on closer inspection, the similar similarity ended there. The car caroler wore what looked like combat trousers and battered but sturdy looking old black army surplus boots, which were partially buried in the six thick snow. Illuminated by the glow of our porch light, snowflakes cascading down around him, hands behind his back, while his deep, powerful voice continued to boom out the classic carol. And what was in those ships, all three? He truly was an awesome sight. I, true, I turned back to Noelle to watch her reaction to the caroler. I knew her face would be a picture, 
and for a few brief seconds as it was, she grinned at him, mesmerized by his song. Then abruptly, the rapid smile on her face shattered. Her eyes widened in unspeakable terror, and she turned to scream. Mm. In that moment, I heard three distinct and separate sounds. Noelle's heart rendering cries, a heavy, dull, metallic thud, and the caroler's deep singing voice, utterly unfazed and smoothly continuing with song. Pray Withers sailed those ships all three on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. It was only dim, I was only dimly aware of a hot, aching sensation in my hand. As I turned back to see what had caused such a terrified reaction from my fiancé, it took me a few seconds to make sense of what I saw. The caroler was still singing, just his smiling mouth visible in the darkness of his hood, but he was attempting to tug something from the doorframe, like a dentist trying to extract a tooth. Confused, I looked at what he gripped in his massive paw-like hand. It was a meat cleaver, sick and gory, burred into the wood of the doorframe. My blood ran cold as I looked at the red snow by his feet, scattered, scattered about his boots were some small pink slugs. Why are they out what in this the weather? I thought to myself. That's what you're thinking? As the caroler wrenched the cleaver with his powerful arms, then it dawned on me. Those weren't slugs. Those were my fingers. The caroler kept right on grinning and singing as he raised the cleaver for a second strike and froze dumbly staring at the useless bloody stumps that marked where my fingers had once been on my right hand suddenly noel was there slamming the door closed in the caroler's face still screaming chris she cried over and over she grabbed my scarf from behind the door the same warm woolly scarf i had worn while decorating the front of her home with lights and then took my wounded right hand in hers Gently, she pulled me away from the door, even as she wrapped the scarf around my mutilated hand as a makeshift bandage. The dull ache was now a roaring pain, white hot, and sending sparks of agony up my arm with every beat of my heart. The police, she mumbled, my voice suddenly starting to swim. My vision startled, suddenly starting to swim. Maybe it was blood loss, maybe it was shock, but even... Every step I took from the door was shakier than the last. Noelle pulled my arm over her shoulder, and together we staggered into the lounge to the phone. Outside, the caroler continued to sing, On Christmas Day in the morning. As we reached the sofa, I tripped, stumbled, then eventually pitched forward into the seat. Without thinking, I tried to break my fall, putting my hands out before me. Even wrapped in the scarf, the sudden jarring impact as the ruined stumps on my hand tried hand struck the hard back of the chair was agony, causing me to cry out in pain. For a moment or two, I could only hear the rushing roar of my own blood in my ears, my vision little more than a white haze as I'd fallen face first into the deep snow outside. I don't know how close I came to passing out, but when I was next aware of my surroundings, Noelle was cradling my head in her hand, telling me that I needed to stay with her. Please, Chris, she whispered frantically, just stay awake, you need to stay awake. So he passed out of the sight of blood. I nodded dully, knowing- She probably passed out she's losing blood. Mm -hmm. I nodded dully, knowing that somehow, fortuitously, I'd ridden out the pain. Phone, I whispered again, police. Seemingly reassured that I wasn't going to pass out anytime soon, Noelle nodded grimly, planted a kiss on my forehead, then scrambled across the room to the phone. She picked up the receiver, quickly punching the buttons, and then she started to weep. It's dead, she sobbed, dropping the phone to the floor. The line's dead. The snow? I asked, but even as I heard the voice from outside echoing around the moonless sky, All is calm, all is bright silent night he was taunting us telling noelle and i that he knew we weren't able to place the call then i saw that cleaver again in my mind's eye its brutish weight and wicked sharp edge and i knew he'd cut the cable he'd silenced us your cell i hissed and noelle nodded before dashing out of the room and up the stairs to our bedroom 
There was silence for a few seconds, and then I heard her despairing cry. Call failed. She ran back to me, dialing the emergency services over and over, each call ending in same, infuriating beep. Speak in heavenly peace. I saw red, blood pounding in my ears. Before I knew what I was doing, I was already lunging toward the door. I don't know if I really thought I could hurt him, but I know that in that moment, I was ready, ready to risk it all to try. I shouted a triad of expletives. <laughs> My brain isn't working for a second. <laughs> of curse words, adrenaline coursing through my veins and lurched across the room. Then, once again, Noelle was there. She deftly stepped between me and the door, her big green eyes locked on mine. No, she said quietly but firmly. Don't go out there, please. I need you. And with that, she placed her hand on my chest, the jewels on her engagement ring twinkling like lights on the tree just a few feet away. I felt the rage and fury ebb away, seeming to pour out of me as I realized she was right. If I ran out there and tried to fight him, what would happen if I was if I had lost? What would You'd he do dead. to her? What would he do to her? It wasn't a risk I could bear to take. Okay, I said calmer, quieter. She didn't drop her hands right away, frowning at me for a second longer, unsure if I was truly ready to drop the foolhardy charge I'd been prepared to make just moments earlier. Seriously, I said, taking her hand in mine, it's okay. With that, she nodded, then embraced me, holding me close as we both tried to comprehend the horror of what had just happened. It took me a moment to realize that, once again, the night had fallen quiet. Do you think he's gone? I asked, gently releasing Noelle and moving toward the curtains. I don't know, she whispered back, already trying her phone again. The look on her face was enough to tell me that she wasn't getting through. Coverage had always been an issue in our house, especially when we had atmospheric conditions such as rain or snow to contend with. Atmosphere. We used to joke that the fact that nobody from the office could ever reach her on a day off was the clincher in our decision to buy this place. The clincher in our decision to buy this place. We used to joke about a lot of things. I inched closer to the curtains, preparing to peek outside. I don't think I'd ever been more frightened than I was in that moment. My hand closed around the material and prepared to pull it aside. I think we've all had that fear of peering out a window into the dark and finding an unfamiliar face staring back. The difference was that this time I knew for a fact that the face would belong to a man who wanted us dead. We both held our breath as I stood there for what felt like 10 whole minutes, yet I realized was probably less than 20 seconds, paralyzed with fear. Then I whipped the curtains back. There was nothing there, just our yard and the dark street beyond. I stood staring into the night, trying to spot even the slightest hint of the caroler's presence. However, snow changes the familiar into something else. It coats and covers everything, obscuring some things. It's bright color, lightning, and transforming others. The weight of the drifts of the trees, hedges, and bushes outside calls them to lean and sag under its weight. As the wind calls the branches to bob, each of them looked like a pale, watchful face peeking out from me from behind a tree. Shapeless, white blob that could have been anything from a bike to a climbing frame to a rose bush. Time and time again, I thought, just for a speck, split second, that I caught sight of the monster in the red coat. But I neither saw nor heard a thing. Finally, I exhaled. He's not there, I said. So what do we do? Noel asked me. The sudden wave of relief I'd been feeling dissipated as I realized that the absence of our tormentor didn't mean anything. He was still out there, somewhere, and we had no idea or when he might return. We need to get somewhere safe, I replied. The car, Noel suggested. It was the only course open to us. That or walk into the night where he was waiting for us. I nodded. Stay in the house. Like he can get in if he just like bashes through a window. What's easier to get through a window or a car window? 
besides you to go from like house to car like i feel like like a house would be a little bit harder but if there's no like phone or anything to get away from him apparently you don't have a jojo it's literally the same difference now they don't have a dog dum dum thems bet with maggie and whatever her name Tilly. is we're not bringing to that house mm -mm. he wouldn't make it he wouldn't make it. <laughs> he wouldn't even get his arm back <laughs> his arm in the window <laughs> I nodded, and then as fast as we could, we dashed through the house to the kitchen. There was an adjoining door to the garage, so we'd be able to get to the car without needing to venture outside. I told Noelle to wait at the door while I got to the car, started the engine, and then opened the sliding garage door to check that the path was clear. If that all went without a hitch, she was to run straight to the passenger side door, and then we would get the hell out of there and not stop until we hit the nearest town a few miles away. If anything else happened, she was to slam the door and lock it. At first she protested, but I made her promise she'd do what I asked. I couldn't let him have us both. It seemed like a good idea, one that would work. I really thought it could. With her reassurances that she would take, wouldn't take any risks, ringing in my ears, I kissed Noelle goodbye and then stepped into the garage. But why did they both go? Well, he had to go get the car ready, apparently. As I crept into the shadowy interior... Body system. As I crept into the shadowy interior, I felt the temperature drop drastically. You would totally tell me to just go out there by myself. No, I wouldn't. It must have been below freezing Well, we went to Bed Bath & Beyond today. You were like, Tom, stop the car. Yeah, because that's exactly the same. Tom, Tom, As Tom. running out into the garage Hold with a dog. murderer. Tom, my boy. Would you get the bags and take them to the I car? I had to pee. All I did was ask him to hold the dog. At every store? For three seconds. I said, please hold the dog. I just have to pee. So how can I trust you with this here? Hmm? What kind of question is that? Logical one. Continue the story. Okay. Is he snorts upstairs? As I crept in the shadowy, shadowy interior, I felt the temperature drop da drastically. Stop making fun of me. It must have been below freezing outside. Welcome to you see the chat about me. Welcome to the room. How are you doing this? What chat about you? I don't... Oh my gosh, Larry! Thank Christ, Thomas is not talking. <laughs> yeah, so you can just shut the hell up, okay? <laughs> they follow me. <laughs> thank Christ. <laughs> Continue your story. Carolyn says pays to have a maligator. <laughs> maligator. <laughs> That was yeah, that's that's scary man uh, would not just, give his arm back. Carly, just know you are on your own in a scary situation. I know. God that's the right. whole thing. Now, this light is not very flattering for my body. I think it's because of the angle and the lighting in here, but I can run quite fast when I'm terrified. Yeah, that's Linda's point, you dingaling. I know, and I'm saying oh, I Oh Carly, you're on your own. S O L. Tommy's you, leaving you. You have a dog that'll protect you. <sighs> okay. Well, not apparently not a husband. That's fine. Well, no, because you're gonna tell me to go get the car by myself. Whatever. <laughs> you're like it's not wrong. You just don't have feels on me. Like you can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Larry. You made my night. Okay. Wonder. Wonder. Don't even go there. Wonder. Don't even go there. <laughs> Continue. And edit right here, Tom. Okay, good. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Hold on. As quickly as I could, I awkwardly threw the door open with my left hand and then dived inside, slamming the door closed behind me, a still barrier between myself and the horrors outside. I breathed a long sigh of relief, then inserted the key in the ignition. I took a deep breath, turned it, and, as, and it purred to life. I don't think I'd ever been so grateful to hear a noise in my life. Quickly, I flickered the wipers on, hoping to clear my field of vision. I heard the rhythmic squeak as the rubber swept back and forth against the glass. But to my confusion, the windows didn't clear. Frowning, I reached out to the screen and drew my fingers across it. They came away wet, leaving clear streaks that revealed the garage door before me. Condensation, not frost. I saw the gap beneath the garage door straight away. The deep mound of snow that had wedged it open when I tried to close the shutter behind me earlier, the last at least two feet deep. Condensation. On the inside of the screen, then came the voice, deep, melodic, not from outside, but the car from the back seat behind me. 
Do you see what I see? I ripped the door open and threw myself out onto the dusty floor as I felt a searing hot pain on my shoulder down my arm to my elbow. As I scrambled towards the door to the kitchen, Noelle started to scream. Behind me, the door of the car creaked open and the caroler unfolded from its dingy confines. Way up in the sky, little lamb. Chris, quickly, Noelle screamed, beckoning me with her hands. Hopping on this W. Tom, back in here. What are you doing? You're doing this wrong. Just See? run. Just run. I, I would have. I would have kept spot. on running. As he, <laughs> that's not what I'm that's As she rolled me towards the safety of our home, I don't remember regaining my feet or that short dash to the doorway. Just run. You just run, Tom. I would definitely have kept running. <laughs> Instead, my next memory is of bracing the door with my shoulders, leaving an angry crimson smear on the paint from the fresh wound on my arm while Noelle stood behind me, locking it. No sooner had she turned the key than came an enormous thud of impact, one that rattled the door in its frame, so powerful that both Noelle and I cried out in alarm. Yes, I, sir. I do love that this person that had to go do the car also lost their fingers. Yeah. I think it's funny because I would be- Oh, so you expect me. Noelle to go out in the car, start the car up and everything, even though she's teeny tiny and this guy's three times her size. I do like to, so I answer the door, I get my arm cut off, I'm bleeding to death, I'm hallucinating, I'm like, uh, and then she's like, well, Tom, now you gotta go start the car for me, it's like, okay, okay, I have, like, one arm, it's fine, then I get my other shoulder stabbed, and I throw myself in not to die, being nagged the whole time, now I have- How are you being one, nagged? Now get in here, go fast, and you're like, run, Tom, run, so it's like, okay, like, at this point, I'm like, guys, just let me die, it's fine, it's, it's probably better than dealing with this. But continue. You How could, is this being nagged? Because I'm saying you should have come with me to the car. So we could have both gotten our faces stabbed? That's your that's your line. I don't know. <laughs> wow. Uh, you revealed a lot. Continue. You're just like Larry. <laughs> <sighs> there came another crash as the caroler threw his bulky frame against the door. Then again, finally he stopped, seeming to realize the futility of his efforts. With a tail as big as a kite, he crooned gently. There were no sounds of exertion in his voice, not the slightest hint that seconds earlier he'd been kicking and pounding to the, on the door to kill us. He was like a machine, inhuman, relentless, without weakness. At least, I'm still picturing myself as this person that's bleeding death now. At least I'm dying knowing it's not just one song this guy's repeating. Oh, I it's like, all of them. I feel like that would be way worse oh, yeah, he just emotionally. Keeps going on. If it was just, if it was one song, on, if it was Jingle Bells like on repeat. Never would, fear, it's all the songs. Mariah Carey, by the way. Noelle and I stood frozen, staring towards the entrance of the garage. Entrance of the garage. From beyond the door, we heard shuffling footsteps heading away from us, his voice fading as he walked back towards the garage door. With a tail as big as a kite. I've heard that. Is that what that like? Bradley. Oh, okay. That was our neighbor. From beyond the door, we heard shuffling footsteps heading away from us. Oh, 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 oh. he's leaving. Okay. We spent the next five minutes brushing books. What are you doing? We spent the next five minutes pushing bookshelves, tables, sofas, anything and everything bulky that we could lay our hands on against all of the windows and doors on the ground floor. We'd recently had new windows fitted, sturdy double locked and double glazed heavy duty PVC, but we weren't prepared to take any risks. Bradley, if you're listening right now, would Hannah, if you had your arm cut off by oh a serial gosh. killer would hannah then tell you to go out by yourself to start the car yes for them? she would. Or would she would she have your back you know she would i'm sorry you know she would okay <sighs> upstairs i said when we'd finished and noelle nodded and followed me upstairs as i walked towards the bedroom door i heard a sudden crash behind me and nearly jumped out of my I love, skin i love what? chat i love chat <laughs> <laughs> thank you bradley i told you you're right okay fair enough god i love chat whirling around i saw the cabinet from our landing now on its side blocking the top of the stairway noelle pushing me into its place another barrier she whispered i it could buy us time i hadn't even thought about what we'd do should the caroler gain access to our home 
But Noel had adding an extra level of security that could buy us valuable seconds should the worst come to worst. I stepped in beside her and shoved the cabinet too, until the entire top of the staircase was obstructed. Then I took her hand in mine and we walked into our bedroom. You're bleeding, she said. Oh, shit. Durr. <laughs> Flatly, her voice dull, numbed by shock. I glanced down at the floor and saw a steady crimson pitter-patter of my blood raining down onto the old pine floor. How have they not done this? Like, for God's sakes. I'm sorry. It's just like... Not only... What is she good for here? Continue. Not only had the wounds from my hand started to leak from the scarf, but it was coming from my arm, too. Yes! Cinch that shit off! What is the scarf gonna do? Belt around it. I don't care. Tighten it off so there's no blood flow out. Not just... Oh, no. Let's just... Shove some cotton on that thing. Spoken by the true Boy Scout, Thomas Aarons. I watch shark stuff every day. Now I had the time to inspect the injury, I realized how badly it was. The gash was deep, undoubtedly caused by a wild swing of that damn cleaver. And it... <laughs> I feel like it's Kimberly. Like, and it would leave it an ugly cleaver. scar! <laughs> this it's whole, an ugly scar! <laughs> this whole night would. <laughs> that, that was corny. You're gonna look terrible for the New Year's Eve party. It'll be fine, I lied, knowing full well that I'd need medical attention sooner rather than later. What do we do now? Noelle blinked, and then realized, oh wait, then raised her right hand. Even during the confusion and chaos of the events in the garage and our subsequent reinforcement of the house, she'd kept a hold of her phone. We had Lifeline. She left, I swear to God, lifted it to right her now, ear and I again called her. for help. Again, the call failed. There we go. That's good. As she tried again and again, I moved over to her bedroom window and peered out into the darkness beyond the glow of our Christmas lights. In that moment, I was grateful for them. There were no streetlights on our little lane, and without the bulbs adorning the front of our home, there would have been no source of illumination. Just the blackness of the night. Instead, they cast a glow that lit just beyond the edge of our driveway. It wasn't much, but enough to see if our tormentor was again at our door. There was no sign of him, but as if to remind me that there was still under his scrutiny, I heard a deep, clear voice Not ringing out us. from the darkness behind the halo light surrounding our home. Another message, another warning that he was watching us and knew exactly where we, what we were doing. I retreated from the window, terrified that any moment his cleaver would come up arsing out in the darkness, circling in over until it crashed through the glass into my exposed face. I can't reach them, Noelle said, tears in, tears of fury in her eyes. This phone is useless. I can't reach anybody. It's okay. Keep trying, I said, slipping my arm around her. Even as I said this, I knew things were far from okay, that I needed to think of something, anything to ensure that we made it through the night. Racking my brain, I sat heavily on the bed, watched as she walked over to the window, pulling back the edge of the curtain to peek out into the night. She stood there in silence, her back to me in front, her back to me for a long time. And as she did, I realized that once again, the carolers voice had fallen silent. Do you see anything? I asked as I climbed to my feet and walked up behind her to join the vigil at the pain nothing I looked, I looked over her shoulder at the street below and saw something that made my heart freeze over the road just a little down the way i could see the light from the windows of kevin and sarah's home our neighbors with their baby daughter where at this monster's mercy i grasped and i gasped in realization and as i did noelle followed my gaze then clamped my head, then clamped a hand to her mouth. Oh no, she cried, fresh tears springing to her, her eyes. I stared out into the darkness and realized that our friends and their child need to be warned. I need to go out into the night. I need to go tell them. I need to get to them before he does, I whispered, my voice betraying my terror. Chris, you can't, Noelle cried, her hands gripping onto my shirt, her head shaking back and forth in denial. I can't leave them to him, I said, gently loosening her fingers from my clothes. They have a baby, Noel. Olivia is just a baby. But what if you don't make it there, Noel asked, her anger in her voice now. He'd kill you, and 
You have died for nothing. Then he'll come here and kill me. Then he'll kill all of them. All of us for nothing. Basically, everyone's fate lied in Chris's hands. You mean the person who's bleeding reason. horrifically? Yep. Yep. So, so, With so, one hand, one arm. I'm not, I'm not going to go there. And what if I do make it there? I replied to Divorce this Their bitch. phone might... They're not even married yet. Oh, well, yeah, good. Their phone Glad. might still be working. Maybe they have coverage in their home. And Kevin drives a 4 by 4 If anyone... If anybody's car is getting out of here, it's his. Noelle stared at me, furious and frightened. And it took every ounce of resolve I had to stick to my guns. More than anything, I wanted to just hide with her and hope that somehow... Some, something else, somebody else would make everything better. I wanted to stay, but I didn't. Keep calling for help, I said. Keep watching out the window. If you see anything, you'll be able to warn me. With you watching my back, he won't be able to sneak up on me. I'll be safe. Noelle glared at me, her lips trembling. Then finally, she shook her head and dropped her gaze to the floor. Okay, she muttered, her voice barely audible. Watch, she'd be like, oh gosh, oh no. Oh no, the horror of what I'm whispering. Watch out! Uh -huh. I'll make it, I said, lifting her chin up. I promise I will. Okay, she said again, then wrapped her arms around me, holding me tight. We stood like that for a long time, neither of us saying anything. What else was there to be said? Eventually, we clambered over the cabinet at the top of the stairs and crept down them. We went into the kitchen, where we had each grabbed the biggest carving knife we had, then made our way to the door. Through the midst, misted glass, I could see the snow falling again, heavily. Huge flakes the size of quartz. That's good, I thought. It'll hide me from him. Carefully. How? Well, you can't, like, like a flurry of snow. You know, see, you can't quite see through a flurry of snow, especially in the dark. I guess. I guess they're assuming these are white people. I carefully slid the table away from the door, loosening the chain and unlocking it. Lock this behind me, I said, and then I kissed my fiancé goodbye. As I flung the door open and darted into the cold night air, I heard her voice behind me. I love you. Then the door was closed, and I heard the locks clicking into place as I dashed, crouching toward the hedge, feeling frighteningly exposed in the glare of the Christmas lights in the front of our home. I dropped into the snow, my back to the hedge, using its bulk to obscure my presence from any watching eye. I was breathing hard, the clammy sweat from my brow turning chilly in the night air. I shuffled around the hedge on my hands and knees, the sound of my own breathing definitely loud in my ears, frantically looking around me for any sign of the red-coated maniac who had mutilated my hand. Upon reaching the roadside, I suddenly became aware of how heavily the snow was falling. No longer sheltered by the shrub shrubbery, the flakes fell fast and relentlessly blowing into my face, causing me to squint. Then I was on my feet, and I ran. My feet sank into the snow, causing me to stumble, but I kept my head down and plunged onward. I ran as if my life depended on it because my life did. It was just a hundred feet or so no to Kevin shit. and Sarah's house. But the distance be the distance Maybe I could talk to him now. Maybe it's to like yawn a before me. The snow fell heavier and heavier, a blizzard obscuring everything before me. As I sprinted into the dizzying, shifting black and white emptiness before me, I misjudged the curb and fell, sprawling onto the road. The knife I had brought with me for protection skidding away into the night. If it hadn't had been for the snow, I might have spilt my skull right split my skull right open. Might have been a better fate. <laughs> Yet even though the snow cushioned my fall, it was still hard enough. Packed down by the passage of vehicles during the during the day, my head slammed into it, my left cheek taking the brunt of the impact. I rolled over, dizzy, my eye already closing as my face swelled. I didn't realize it at that time, but the blow had actually fractured my cheekbone. Instead, I lay there, my senses scrambled, my vision swimming. <laughs> what a clumsy animal. Well, hold on. It's because their significant other didn't really help them out, and they lost their hand, got gashed on the arm, got, oh, God knows how much blood, and it's like, well, everyone would have died for nothing because you can't do shit. And listen, I'm going to stay way over here, be like, there's a bad guy there. You should do something about that. I'm just like hobbling, like, oh. 
Here, I think we need to go back to our comments here's real an quick Why? because a lot of things are happening. Oh my god. A lot of things are happening. Hannah. Hannah show. Side note, Santa came for Jojo at our house. <gasps> LOL. Oh, Amazing. Snap. I am so he went glad. down the wrong chimney. He did. And I am <laughs> so glad that uh Oakley did not end up in prison or whatever. I got that text. Either way, they know what we're talking about. Yep. Bradley says, most likely say F me, LOL. Bradley then says, whoa, LOL. Nice joke. And <laughs> please read it. Please oh, read it. Please read it. Fucking please, hell. Read it. please read it. Yes. Beef stick. 74 says, how is it you can publicly speak, but you can't read whoop, whoop bass? <laughs> I still took him two tries. Anyway, uh, thank you for listening to Fishing in DMV. I really appreciate all the people that, li- well, what, why is, my God, I, you know what? I do appreciate about my audience. They are so polite on Fishing in the DMV, but yeah. holy crap. Yeah. When they come here, spirits and ghost stories, it's all hell breaks loose. It's just beat the retard. Tommy. Jesus Christ. Uh, excuse me, you said my last name wrong. Okay, well, if Hannah, if you did not read the earlier, <laughs> please see earlier <laughs> message. Tommy can't read. <laughs> Tommy can't read. So, uh, yeah, this was, uh, you want to tell the story here before we get, actually, we'll, we'll hold that till after we're done here. Continue, continue the story. Okay, the story goes on. Whoop this. All right, so he broke his face bones. Um, and, or um, wonder. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and he gets into his, his neighbor's house. My eyes slipped around our neighbor's home towards the stairs, the kitchen, the living room, expecting to see the caroler at any moment. But he wasn't there, nor was anybody else. The house was still. And children listened to hear sleigh bells in the snow. He heard the caroler's voice in the distance. Then I realized that wasn't his voice. It was the original recording, Ben Crosby's voice, coming from a speaker somewhere within the house. I actually laughed. A sudden, unexpected noise that seemed to bubble up from my chest and out of my mouth without warning. I didn't like the way it sounded. High-pitched, shrill, hysterical. Yet somehow, it made it all the funnier and set me off laughing again. I laughed until tears ran down my now purple swollen cheeks and I dabbed them away with a blood-soaked scarf wrapped around my throbbing hand. Finally, the laughter, or was it sobbing, subsided and I coughed to clear my throat. Then I realized that, other than the voice of good old Bing, may your days be merry and bright, I hadn't heard a single other noise, not even a mouse. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be so callous. This is hard. I can't forget that night. I can still see what I saw in these. So fucking polite. What he did to those people. I should have said that while laughing. It makes me scared and sick. Sometimes I find myself imagining what they went through, and I don't know if I'll ever sleep again. I found Kevin on the rug in front of their fire. His face looked terrified, empty, bloody, eyeless sockets gazing towards the family's lopsided tree, broken bulbs on the floor around his mutilated torso. Later, I learned they weren't logs crackling away on the fire. Those were his legs. Horrified, I ran through to the kitchen, praying that I wasn't too late for Sarah and Olivia, even though I already knew the truth. I found Sarah there. Her limbs had been bound with tinsel, and as I looked at the smears of blood and the bruises on her naked body, I knew that he hadn't killed her straight away. Then, when he'd finished with her, in a spidery, childish crawl, the caroler had dubbed a message on the wall in her blood. I saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus. In tears, I stumbled back to the lounge, heading straight for the phone, weeping as I went. I picked up the receiver and held it to my ear. Nothing. God damn you, I screamed, hurtling the phone across the room at the six-foot tree in the corner. So this episode is also sponsored by Verizon. Verizon Mobile. Or not sponsored Fuck by Fuck landlines. Verizon. It was only then that I remembered the song I'd heard in the snow. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Another message. Sweating. Not really a message. (laughs) Holding my breath. I took a hesitant step towards the tree. Then another. Then I saw why it lit in such an ungainly way. That wasn't an angel at the top. It almost looked like a doll. She almost looked like a doll. I threw up, a spray of vomit erupting between my fingers and splattering down onto the blood-stained rug where my friend and neighbor had spent his last agonized moments of life. 
That monster had killed them all. Butchered them. They died in their home, terrified. And I had been too late, too stupid, too scared to do anything about it. I sank to the floor, head in my hands, and cried. What else could I do? I'd failed them, and I'd failed Noelle. In my mind's eye, I saw what the caroler had done to Sarah. Noelle was alone, and she was out there. I set off at a sprint, throwing the door wide open and plunging into the billowing snow. I was reckless, not even thinking about the risks of my own safety. Cut your loss. I just needed to get back to her. Now. She's not worth it. Now. I was so confu consumed with that thought that I didn't see the figure until he was right in front of me. I skidded to a halt, bellowing an alarm as the shape loomed over, the s over me in the snow. It was that damned snowman again. I swore loudly, suddenly consumed with fury, and lifted my foot to kick it over frustration. Then I saw the raspberry pink streaks of the snowman's face, clown-like tears of paint. No, not paint. Tracing down to the corners of its stupid grin. Stepping closer, I finally looked at its eyes. Those were Kevin's eyes. I took off, sliding on the, sliding on the same patch of ice that I'd fallen afoul twice before. Stumbling forward, but breaking my fall with my good hand and quickly regaining my strength. As I dashed back towards the house, legs pumping and heart pounding, I saw something glinting in the road. A flash of silver in the moonlight. My knife! I remembered thinking that this was finally a stroke of good fortune on a night that had brought us all nothing but ill. I scooped a snatch it from the snow, then straightened back up and continued toward my house, my fiancé. I'd taken barely two more steps when he slammed into me, the knife again flying from my grip, my unprepared body hitting the hard-packed snow with a thud. I felt his weight on top of me as, my f as I lay face down on the floor and quickly, instinctively, I swung an elbow back trying to catch my attacker unawares before the cleaver could fall. It didn't work. Instead, a strong grip fastened around my arm and yanked my arm back hard causing me to cry out in pain. I struggled, shouting furiously, but then I felt something cold and hard snap around my wrist. I said, freeze, shouted the man on my back as he wrenched my wounded hand behind my back and fastened the other cuff around my wrist. As he lifted me to my feet, I became aware of the flashing blue light. A police car, a policeman. He was young, powerfully built. Hands up, don't shoot. Short closely cropped hair and a sort of face that suggested there was no room for argument when it came to his demands. Oh, thank God, I sighed, sagging with relief. I need your name, sir, the officer said, glancing about in case the blood-soaked maniac he'd just apprehended in the street had any accomplices lurking nearby. I blurted out my name and told him I lived just over the road that we'd been trying to reach the police all night and there was a lunatic on the loose. And... Who's we, he interjected, loosening his grip on my collar. Something I had said managed to convince him that I was no threat, and he seemed to visibly relax around me, even if I, even if well, he wasn't going to You have no fingers or hand. Yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, did you say fingers or hand? I think it was like all of his okay, fingers, but only for his For some thumb. reason, I feel I have, like only his thumb is available. Uh, in, I feel like all his fingers have gone. In my head cannon, this cop like put handcuffs on his little bloody nub. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I thought it's like, wait a minute, what? He just like put his little nub behind him, like, wouldn't that pop right off? Yeah. Okay, never mind, continue. Yeah, pretty makes, much it would have, though. Yeah, that makes more sense that it's like. I guess if it was really tight. It's his fingers. It's his fingers that got caught. Right, off. it's no, just, it's, just no, his it's fingers. Not. So he still has like. Yeah, his for some reason, I was thinking like Ash from Great, but hand Evil Dead. Okay, now. Hand bones. Yeah, these His hand bones. Oh, Jesus Christ. Continue your story. What? Arm uh, bones and arm bones and head bones. Okay, whatever. You got your feet bones. All right, all right. Okay, sir, we received an emergency call from her. Can you tell me which house is yours? Upon hearing those words, my heart soared. At long last, somebody up here in the heavens had smiled down on us and given us the good fortune in which we could, we'd been so desperate all night. Noel had finally managed to get through to the authorities. We were safe at last. Guess I replied, turning towards our home. Come on, I'm going there now. It's the one with all the lights. At first, I couldn't see the lights on our house, and I couldn't understand why. Finally, I spotted them, but something was wrong. There weren't as many. They seemed to be more 
sparsely distributed than I remembered, and several of them seemed to be piled up in a mound at the bottom of the wall, unceremoniously dumped there. It was as if they had been ripped from the wall, or had fallen away from the weight of something bulky, collapsing as something heavy and powerful had climbed them. I don't remember much about what happened next. It seems I broke free from the officer and ran towards the house. I can see flashes, snatches of memory. The door, already open, bloody footprints on the stairs, the cabinet, pushed aside on the landing, the dark puddle seeping out from under the bedroom door, Noel, the pieces of Noel. Then the policeman was on me, bundling me out of the door, screaming into his radio for assistance, even as he dragged me back down the stairs, out of the door to his car. I have no idea how long it took for the others to arrive. It could have been hours. It could have been seconds. I remember crying, unable to answer the paramedic's questions as he examined my battered, swollen face, my mutilated hand, and terrible gash in my arm. Eventually, one of the officers, swarming in and out of my home, told the ambulance crew that I had to be taken to the hospital. As they closed the ambulance door, I saw one policeman dash out of my house and puke all over the front path, the liquid steaming into the snow. Later that night, they told me that Noelle was gone. Of course, I knew that I'd seen what he'd done to her, seen the blood splattered on the wall, dripping from the ceiling. When I close my eyes now, I can see it every single time. A week later, I was released, still, still sore and taking a cocktail of pain medication to get to sleep each night. Despite the bitterly cold afternoon air, so freezing it caused my bones to ache, I spent at least five minutes standing on the doorstep, unable to move into the house that had once been my home, but would now only ever be the place I lost Noel. I don't know exactly how long I'd been standing there when I was interrupted by a tall black man with a weary face, wearing a black coat, who walked up the path behind me and introduced himself as Detective Ryder the senior investigator officer for the case. Ashamed of the fear that had kept me outside, I led us both into the house and we went into the lounge. Their rider told me that over the remaining few hours before dawn, after the ambulance had taken me away on that night, the caroler came calling. The police had conducted a thorough sweep of the street, as well as Kevin and Sarah and Olivia's house. They found the bodies of the Bridges family in the next house along. Mr. Bridges had been a gruff, surly guy, yet his wife and teenage son seemed to always be so happy, as if they'd somehow siphoned off his share of festive goodwill. I don't know what the caroler did to them. I suppose I should be thankful for that. Further down the road, Mrs. Parsons had been out visiting family that evening and had been unable to get back home in the snow. That trip had saved her the life. Saved her life. The cleaver was from her kitchen. They never found the caroler. Ryder told me that the crimes were not unlike some that occurred over the holiday period last year right across the county. The police were treating both cases as related. The murders last year, like those in the night, I lost Noel, remained unsolved. That should be the part where my story ends, but it hasn't. I know it hasn't. Just three days ago, after the cleaners had finished with the house, I finally mustered up the energy to clear away our Christmas decorations. I didn't want any more remainders for that night. From that night, I was done with Christmas for good. As I took down the tree, I saw a tag on one of the gifts on the floor below. Noelle's curling handwriting. To my husband-to-be, with all my love, N. The tears came suddenly without warning. And my body was racked with sobs so powerful they brought me to my knees. I crouched there beneath the tree and wailed and howled as if only, as if the only release from my grief would be to scream it out of me. If only it were that simple. Finally, the pain subsided and I wiped the tears and snot from my face with the galls on my hand. I was alone. I will always be alone. Kneeling there, I started to rummage through the presents, sorting them into piles, mine and Noelle's, stopping occasionally to weep once more as I thought about how Noelle would have reacted to each of the gifts I'd bought her, or to sob as I read more of her thoughtful handwritten tags. I thought I'd finished when I spotted one last parcel, way down at the back of the tree. It was small, shyly wrapped, 
and seemed out of place. The pattern on the paper was unfamiliar and seemed a little strange. Odd spots dotted about in a haphazard manner. Confused, I reached back and pulled it out. There was no tag on it, so I held it up to take a better look. That was when I realized that the spots on the paper weren't some avant-garde pattern. It was blood seeping through from within. I don't know why I didn't just throw it across the room and get straight on the phone with Detective Ryder. Literally would have been the smartest move. Because I, I don't know why I had to open it. I had to see what he had left for me. But I did. I had to look. With a shaking hand, I peeled back the paper to reveal a dirty cardboard box, one that had been taken from our own trash. On top, it was a note written in that same childlike crawl that I'd seen on the wall in Kevin and Sarah's kitchen. I read it, then slowly unfolded the lid of the box. I saw gray skin, dark red flesh, white knobs of bone. He made a star for the top of the tree. One he'd fashioned from fingers bound together with his own thick red hair. At first I thought he'd just scooped up mine from the snow, but I soon realized there were too many. It was only then I realized the diamond and pink sapphire engagement ring on one that I realized he'd used some of Noelle's fingers too. Detective Ryder arrived quickly. His team took the star and the note, searching for further clues. Today I bought a gun, and tonight I will sit by my door. I will sit by my door and wait for him to return. And if he doesn't, I'll do it again tomorrow. With my good hand. And the next night, and the next night, and I'll wait until he comes back. And that was the tale of the caroler. Okay, so we got some things to talk about we here. We have so much to unpack. Okay, so we got a great scary stuff in the news. It's hilarious and it's funny. Please stay around for the scary stuff in the news. You're going to really like that. But okay, so dude, I just want to tell you right now, you're better off without this bitch. Um, anyone that's going to just be like, hey, listen, good luck to go everywhere. That's called karma. That's why she died. Like 100%. If you've watched Scooby-Doo or any horror movie, you never split up. You never split you up. You never split up. That's and the fact that she just sat there like, just do this for me. Just do that Horror for me. Horror movie 101. I mean, I, I feel like, honestly, this guy. Did after, she do anything? She did nothing. But hear my point out. I think the serial killer just chose not to kill him. Like, listen, this poor bastard, he doesn't, he he deserves to live. He I'm deserves to live because he did solid. so much work. Yeah. He was laying there in the snow, bleeding to death. No I'm even going to make here. him a gift. Here's all the fingers. That, I did all the hard work. You did all the hard work too, boy. You know the thing that popped into my mind about this whole thing? Is the fact that the cops will come to this horrific crime scene blood and body parts everywhere and then the next day he has to show up to this house and then six days later the cleaners come yes my mind went there it's like so the cops just like just let him go into this house and there's blood stains and body parts still it's just like your whole family is murdered that's terrible it's like well we well, got here are the all keys. we needed from the crime scene <laughs> so here are the keys listen the cleaners will be here in about a month um have it back good luck with this emotionally you know how it works <laughs> That's so bad. Like, I never thought about that. Like, if someone murders, in, like, let's say if you get brutally raped and murdered in your house, does the state pay for the cleanup for free? Yeah, no. Or do you pay for it? No, you have to pay for it. They're not going to pay. I They're really, not going to clean your house for you. I think 100%. I think, I think if you got raped and murdered in this house, I don't think I should, I should pay for that. Carol Ann says he's the one who demanded to go to the neighbors. She didn't want him to go. 100% agree. 100% agree However, with that. But she should have gone with him. She should have been more like, we she should stay together. She shouldn't have stayed in the house. Yeah. You Why don't, didn't they go together? You don't stay alone. But anyway. Never separate. She didn't want to go. She didn't want to. She didn't want him I to know. Go. I know. But that, and then she should have still gone though with him. Buddy system. Right. But anyway, I just think like it's completely, we pay a lot in taxes. I don't care what state you're in. I think if somebody gets murdered in your house or something horrific happens like that, I think they should like, listen, um, your wife and dog were put through a wood chipper in your living room. Guess what? We're going to put you up in a hotel yeah. and we're going to clean this stuff up until it looks nice. So you can psychologically deal with this. Not like, really nice. Hey, listen, we're going to vacuum up a little bit of evidence and then you deal with that emotionally. Yeah. And just for some reason, I think that, that, I mean, that, that's a really nice thought that tripped me for a while. Cause guess what? Guess what? If they did that, they would have found the diamond star yeah. ring. It wouldn't have been him. Yeah. 
I feel like that's really shoddy stuff. I don't know why it's just so funny to me. Like, I, I feel like there were still body parts of hers around the living room, and he was in there with a the trash can, like, picking it all up afterwards. I don't know. My mind went there. It's really dark. All right. Well, um, that, that, that was a long, long story, and thank you, everyone, who and stuck I it out really with us. I really do like the gun your... thing. It's like, I, I, I mean, really... obviously, they had to bring in the gun. He was oh like, I've got God. a... I so hope that they were arguing about that beforehand. It'd be so well, hilarious. sadly, that's the story didn't go into that much detail. It just went into detail. It'd be a hilarious backstory if he wanted to like start hunting, and she was like shooting it down, and then all this happened. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why that would have made the story better. But let us transfer to scary things in the news, guys. This one's going to be a little bit of a palate cleanser. Um, I really enjoyed this. Let me make sure the audio is adjusted real quick. Carly, again. Okay, uh -oh. perfect. Oh, it's uh -oh. perfect. Um, this one right it? here is a little bit of a palate cleanser. Let's make sure we get this all up. Here we go. Yeah, are you reading this? Oh, oh I'm reading this. Oh, Don't, do not worry. So here we go. A mule deer attack leaves Wyoming couple with multiple puncture wounds and a fractured vertebrae <gasps> you think deer are these like cute little creatures what? no not always in this situation and this only happened this happened vertebrae yes and this happened two days ago two days ago oh this happened. shit where so we're gonna get Wait, Wyoming. We're, before we get into the whole story okay. i'm gonna show you the video of what happened what you have a video yes dude ladies and gentlemen look at this look at this look at this whole thing we're Look at those antlers. We're gonna watch this a couple of times, okay? Holy! Carly, the first time, no Look one talks. Look at those antlers. We're gonna watch this a couple of times, okay? Shh, shh. That's weird. Hold on, Let's see what's going on. What an echo we've got there. We got an echo up here. Uh, five seconds. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. Hold on. Um, this is gonna be real exciting. <gasps> we've got seven viewers. We do got seven viewers, guys. Seven. All right, cool. Wait for this. You're about to be mind blown. You're about to watch somebody's vertebrae get shattered okay. by a deer. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's what you just said. Oh, here it comes, here it comes. <laughs> Baby, come here. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god, I don't know why I love this so much. The dog was like mildly oh. attacked but it could crawl under the car and get away so this is why you need a ring doorbell these nuts says not the dog <laughs> just in case you were wondering these nuts says not the dog no the dog is fine but again this is why you gotta get a ring doorbell whether you're getting raped murdered or killed by a deer it will all go on youtube yep. so we're gonna watch this again with a play-by-play -play, okay you famous. so first time guys was a palate cleanser go back in the live stream you can watch it with without our interpretation this is the best part we're gonna go through our interpretation and then we're gonna read the reading documents so <laughs> i don't know why i love this so much so we're gonna we're gonna step to karen here um karen just screaming her ass off oh i know it's just it's it's just it's so good this just makes me want to ring doorbell I cried so much the first time i watched this thing okay. all right here we go there you go so, this deer just off, doing its own thing. Sees her, freaks out, like, oh, I'm out of here. It's her reaction to me, though, that's just absolutely priceless. Like, yeah. Okay. At this point, you have an option here. Yep. You're dealing with a wild animal. You have a vehicle right there. Yep. Put the vehicle between you and it. Or whatever. Yep. Don't just stand there like a fucking jackass. Right. And backing up is like welcoming now, it towards you. This is another thing, guys. Huge shout out. Don't let your dog out without putting it on a, a leash. Second, second. I do respect people that sometimes have a smaller dog however no you don't based on the topography here they are in idaho they're in like more of an outdoorsy very farmy area why is it every dog you have could be taken by a hawk i know literally 
Okay. Baby, look, look now, at this, look at this dog. Say, this is a wiener dog, for Christ's sake. I know. This little thing is like, fuck this shit. I'm right. going after him. Yep. Look at him. The deer is like, I'm going to fight you. Right. The deer's like, oh, no, check out these cool pointy things on my head. Back to her doing, what the hell is she even doing here? Yeah, she's just turning around, chilling. She just did a circle. Yeah. She did nothing. Yeah. Meanwhile, your wiener dog is going balls deep into this deer. It's like, I'm going to save my family. <laughs> now she's screaming. Now, this is, this is Karen's. Fail safe. Oh, this is so funny. The siren. This is so funny. Oh, you're gonna just hit it with your purse. Oh, she missed. She, she missed. missed. With the purse. She didn't even hit it with the purse. So her hands are completely full what, what of bring, all what, kinds of stuff. Yeah, she got, Karen's not gonna drop her laptop. But right why is Karen or holding all of this stuff? Is that good squat for him? Look, look at her position. Look at her. Oh yeah, that's on point. That lower back right now, there. She's getting. Oh, now she's just getting plowed. She's getting the shuffle. Plowed. <laughs> Whoa. That's so much better in slow motion. Dude, it and totally stabbed her. <laughs> Look at her holding on to its horns. Okay, okay. Uh, Linda and With one arm, though. L Linda and Carol Ann. Please. I don't know if you can see this right now. She does. We. And By the way, this whole time, the husband's probably washing. We don't know what the husband's doing. The husband's going to get in here. But don't <laughs> worry. So the wiener dog's not done a full lap. He's retreated. He's back. He's getting yeah, ready. Yeah, yeah. He's just Karen has the antlers. <laughs> My question is this. Do you let go of the antlers? Hmm. Now, I'm asking this, guys, and you might be, I'm pausing the video right here. This is very important to this whole study, is because I'm actually with a goat expert. <laughs> so, Carly, you've had a goat or two, right? Could you explain to the audience that you've actually held goats before or had goats? I have. You've had goats, right? Yeah. Cool. I so, was the president of the 4-H Goat Club. So, she was the president of the 4-H Goat Club. This is good, because this is like, she's our basically our professional, our scientist. Mm -hmm. Do horns, are horns used for control? You could potentially, yes, use the horns to guide the head away from your body, yes. So if you were being attacked by a goat trying to headbutt you and it had the horns, yeah, would you just let go and just scream your ass off? No. Or could you use the horns to like have some kind of... Would totally use the horns to give me something to grab So onto. with that said, in this picture here, she clearly has a very, very good grip. I just love this. She, does. she has a great grip on those horns. She has a great grip. Now, I'm just saying, like, it sucks that she's... I love that she's still screaming the whole time. She's... I know. But I'm pretty, <laughs> sure, she only, I'm pretty <sighs> sure she's only holding onto the horns with one arm. The other arm is still clutching whatever she's brought outside with her. Which makes no sense. They will push back if they're being pushed. I don't care. I'm still controlling the head. Because, again, you think about it. If, if you have the horns right up against you, that's way better than if it could has acceleration to puncture you with them. Well, it did puncture her, though. But I'm saying, like, if somebody has a knife, mm -hmm. if I hold on to it, that's a way better situation than I give them the knife back so they can keep stabbing. Yes. So if I let go of the antlers, it could back up. Yes, but that's why she needs again. to hold on to it with both arms well, is what I'm watching. saying. Let's just keep watching. Everyone's good. Here's, a, here's Stan. He's got oh, it. Stan's got it now. Okay. Oh. Oh. And she just keeps screaming. She's so annoying. I absolutely love also... <laughs> This guy is my hero. This guy does not love her. Nope. He's over He's it. He's just They dumb. have been married for about 50 years, he I think. He just wants to be killed by this deer. Look, she's on the ground laying there crying yep. and yep. screaming. Yep. He pushed it away. Yep. And, and just grabs it with one hand. One just hand. Just dragging it, it down the driveway. It looks like he's just going to drag it down the driveway. Like just he's get, over Just it. be done with it. No fear in his mind about what's going on no, right now. he doesn't give At it. all. Look at him. He's like, come on, dear. Let's go. Oh, but he trips because he's old. How old do you think these people are? Oh, my gosh. So she's probably in her <laughs> late 50s. Deer is fucking shit up. He's definitely in his 60s. <laughs> and that deer's just chilling now. I mean, the fact that he's already... A deer's like, what were you attempting to do, you he old bastard? He has fought this deer better than she has by far. Oh, yeah. For 100%. Sure. At least he's like kind of like, he's deterred He's just it. guiding it. Yeah, but he's deterred it a little bit here. Okay. Now the deer's just confused. Oh, back to her. Oh, another dog. Poodle. Oh my gosh, it's another dog. I didn't notice that the first time we watched it. Oh, you're right. There is. There's two. Yeah. Oh, wait. One. Look. Two. Oh, they got three dogs. Yeah, they do, because that's a new dog back there. And they're all worthless. Yep. 20 bucks. God love them, whether you but hate them or not. why are all their dogs out there willy-nilly without leashes on or anything? If they had a Great Dane, a Malinois, yeah. not a Jojo. Even a Jojo. A Great Dane or a Malinois. <laughs> 
a, a legit sheepdog. We know from yesterday. I mean, Jojo was there to. Oh, if it was another dog, ass. maybe. Yeah. But not a deer. He's gonna, he's gonna just like tongue blast it to death. I don't know. Ah, uh, that never mind. Anyway, so we're gonna finish this video off. Oh. This is. And she's still this, standing this, there screaming. This takes this video, guys. Oh from my a six god. To a ten. Look at this. Look at this. Look at look this. At, now, the look, deer's just chilling. He's she, just confused. Look, she has a wrist. You can tell that she's a hardcore gardener. She has like this wrist brace here for grooming. She's got her hands on her knees. Yeah. So she's ready so she can really use her lungs. And she's just going to sit here and she's just going to belch. Oh, turn that light over. Thank God. Oh, he's coming back for you. And then, this is my favorite part. I'm just pissed. It's locked. It's locked. Baby, come here. Oh, he gets the smallest dog and hobbles away. Deer. The smallest dog is his baby. That deer's still so confused. He doesn't want to be there. <laughs> the deer's like, what the fuck just Yeah, the deer's like, the what's happening? <laughs> they all stopped screaming. <laughs> what's going on? I know still, I truly think the deer didn't care. It was just like, I just gotta get this bitch to shut up. I just gotta get this bitch to shut up. <laughs> and then but, she disappeared and he's like, what? He's just like, he's almost like he was in a trance. What the hell? Huh? What was I? What's going on? Oh, my God. The fact that she missed with the purse and then almost fell over. Oh, my God. That made me so happy. God. And he goes, it's locked. He can't even get in. And then he, he just, just grabs the wiener dog. He's like, all right, we're going to get over here Baby. Now. <laughs> That's what the dog's name is, baby. Baby. Oh, <laughs> he just picks the dog up. And just like, that makes me so happy. Away. Oh, that was great. These wow. nice. Oh, God. First off, you have the greatest name. If I had a gift card to give you, I'd give you one. Who is that? I don't know. Who are you, these nuts? It's probably with B-Stick 74. <laughs> Half the people that follow me on fishing the DMV, they are. We're not gonna go there. Anyway, the deer was just and then guys, we have friends. the last thing. He that... really was though. And then we have our last um, animal thing that's gonna be in scary stuff in the news for oh, today. There's another thing. Yeah, there's one last thing. This is really not like something we're gonna go into, but <clears throat> I thought this was a very interesting like thing to talk about. Okay. Which is it talks about jaguars in the United States. Jaguars. Yep. Here we are. So jaguars may return to the U.S., making a comeback in New Mexico. Okay. In our lifetime, jaguars have only been native to South and Central America. However, that wasn't always the case. In fact, they once roamed North America. Yes, they were once jaguars in the United States. But these days, only the sports cars named after the beloved big cat roam our streets. On Monday, the Center of Biology Diversity pen pen pensioned the USF ws to help bring jaguars back to its rifle home with a few possible living in mexico it could be made possible so the article goes on here but the biggest the biggest um the biggest takeaway is the fact that the the united states government is talking about bringing jaguars back and reintroducing them now i read through this article i'm not going to bore you with it again guys link in the episode description everything we talked about there's two things number one Basically, they're going to allow jaguars to, to move across the border, back and forth. So there are there is a small population in Mexico. And what they're basically saying is, like, if they migrate over or if they roam over the border, no big deal. We're going to let them be there. We're not going to push them back. The other one is they're going to legitimately reintroduce them into Arizona, New Mexico, things like that. I think it's very interesting because I know that there was this – I'm doing a grizzly bear episode of Spirits and Ghost Stories that's going to probably drop in January, and I'm finding so many great threads on Instagram about people being nuts about all this stuff. But it's a possessed grizzly bear? Mm. I don't understand how that follows in with the Spirits and Ghost Stories there is vibe. There is mythology around bears, especially you go back to just different Native American tribes, but it's also people's relationship with them. So example, when we do shark episodes, people are really crazy that if someone gets brutally attacked by a shark, Everyone on social media just completely rushes, like, fuck the person. It's it's the person's fault no matter what, even if it's a 13-year-old boy that dies. Uh -huh. Love the shark. Same thing with grizzly bears. It's so crazy. Like, I went this one thread about this person was mauled and her donkey was killed when she was on a hike. And everyone was just destroying this lady online. It's like, it's your fault. You shouldn't be in the woods. No one should be living in the woods anymore. It should just be for the bears or whatever. Anyway, the whole point is, Comment threads are fantastic, and we're going to get into that for the Grizzly Bear episode. It's going to be a lot of fun because there's a lot of quacks out there. But the fact that the government is trying to reintroduce a jaguar into the United States, 
kind of leads credence to the idea that they're trying to reintroduce wolves and mountain lions into Virginia, hmm. which there's always been rumors about that, which I cannot confirm or deny that's true. But those are the rumors that I hear from old farmers, especially down in like Middleburg, places like that. And I've even heard people up here in the PA area that there's talk of them reintroducing wolves and cougars. And it's so funny because they're always like, no, that's never going to happen. No, we're not doing that. Cut to this article published this week where the federal government's like, well, what if we introduce you know, jaguars? Which kind of gets back to this whole scary thing in the news where it's like, should we be reintroducing these predators? <clears throat> and my biggest thing is culpability. So let's just say, hypothetically here, lions used to be native to Virginia, and you reintroduce them, and then you're at Timmy's fifth birthday party, and God damn it, the lion hopped the fence and grabbed Timmy. You could make the argument at that point that like, okay, that's fine. Timmy wasn't here, naturally. It was the lion's territory. But who's culpable for the lion killing your kid or your cattle or your dog or your pet? Who's actually culpable for that? I think it's very interesting because I, I think like in some instances, yes, you want to introduce predators, but that's a slippery slope if you actually legitimately introduce them, mm -hmm. a, a hyper predator. Mm -hmm. And it's where you're introducing them. They want them to be around the whole, you know, Southwest part of the United States. Yes. Um, I think the idea of just letting them like migrate here naturally, that's fine. But the idea of dumping cougars, jaguars, not cougars, into Arizona, I just, that's, to me, would be terrifying to be out in the woods and to be like, by the way, it's like, now you're in the, the cougar territory. And you might be like, Tom. Tom is the most scared of actual. Could, could you, could you, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got, I got a piece here, I got a piece here. And you might be saying, well, Tom, why are you so scared of this? Because depending on the creature, you are not allowed to defend yourself. In Alaska, it is illegal to shoot a bear. Remember, and this will be part of it, I have the grizzly man audio, those people getting eaten to death. Mm -hmm. And the funniest thing in there is like, well, why didn't the guy have a gun? Because in certain places in Alaska, in certain places where they're super protected, it is actually better for you to be attacked than to defend yourself because you'll go to jail for life if you shoot a bear that's what's so scary depending on if this happens where they're like by the way we're gonna introduce this thing and if you try to defend yourself you're gonna go to prison for a long time that's freaking terrifying to me well damn boy you gave us three scary things in the news to just try and keep up with my hour and 15 minute story what is it? we got four people still watching this pretty awesome yeah, it is pretty awesome. But let's end it on a high note and tell everybody. Hi. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Family brutally Happy raped holidays. and murdered. There are cougars out there. Jack Happy Horse. Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. <clears throat> so, guys, yep, have a wonderful and blessed Christmas. I really, oh boy. He didn't have a gun because he was an activist who wanted to be with the bears. Don't even get him started, Carol Ann. No, no, do not, do not. Dude thought it was the Bears were his friends. <laughs> uh, Carol Ann, I actually listened to the audio of that, and it is horrifically bad. I, I watched the documentary to prep for this story in, in Netflix, and Carly, you know about it. I did not sleep that night. You listen to the audio, and you can hear the bones crunching, and you can hear the guy get eaten alive. Oh, I slept fine. And, well, you're weird. But then to hear the, like, the, the girlfriend being like, what do you want me to do? Play dead. And he's like screaming it's not working, and the thing's just like crunching into him like... <laughs> And then you can like hear her try to scream and like hit him with a frying pan. I'm sorry, I don't care what kind of activist you are. Like, thank goodness they're. I don't know, ugh. Well, I know you know the whole story. But then did you listen to the audio? Guess what? At our next competition, if I ride together, I'm going to bring the audio. Anyway, on that okay. bombshell. Uh, yeah, and on that note, um, we actually are getting back to something pretty interesting. Are we? Yeah, I. Thank you for mentioning this, by the way. You're Guys, welcome. this is the last episode for 2022. But next year, to let you know, for 2023, the first episode is actually going to be on Amer American mythology, on a Maryland mythology. A Maryland we're, mythology. We're going back to cryptids, guys, what? and Tommy's back in the saddle. Miss Bird, guys, round of applause. Because she's been doing so much work lately, I've been able to do a lot of research for our next episodes. The next cryptid on our list is one that dates back to the... Scroll there. All right. Sorry, guys. So... Our next story is about a cryptid that dates back to the 1800s. It has to do with Maryland and goats. 
The goat man has been a legend in the Maryland area of Prince George's County for over a hundred plus years. Oh snap. And in our next episode, we're going to delve into the mythology and the bridge that bears his name. PGC. Yep. PGC. And then if you, for your horse people, that's Prince George's Equestrian Center. If you're not a horse person, it's Prince George's Equestrian Center. Never mind. <laughs> no, PGC is Prince George's County. Yeah. Prince George's Equestrian Center. Prince no, Prince that's George's. PGEC. Prince George's Equestrian Center. And I'm going to do some editing to my story. <laughs> that's good <laughs> He's going to have to delete all of that footage. Because <laughs> wonders. <laughs> <laughs> wonders. Wonders. No, no, it works wonder. <laughs> it works wonder. And it's really interesting about the goat man and how that the mythology got there. And of course, you guys know, if you've watched my cryptid uh, deep dives, which I absolutely love and adore, this is going to be a lot of fun, a lot of history, a lot of knowledge going to go your ways. Anyway, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, whatever your religion is, if you're not. Show Happy on. holidays. Have a great break, everybody. Happy New Year. We'll be back for 2023. And we'll see you next time on Spirits and Ghost Stories. Bye. Bye.